Hi, my name is Angelo Cayo. Hi, I'm Andres Peña. And this is our CS160 graphics project. It's going to be about basic form of shading. And basically, before we ask what is foam shading, or what the other kinds of shaders are, we have to ask, what is shading? So first we are going to talk about the whole light interacts with objects. Uh, modeling light can be very complicated because there, there are a lot of calculations involved. Um, in computer graphics we need a model that is as simple as possible at the same time that is as realistic as possible. So, so yeah, when you get to like the falling shading, you have you know your three components. You have your specular component, your diffuse component, and your ambient component. So if we took, like, looking in real life, this onion, for example, you can see that it has a it's nice specular component. Um, the sort of, there's no, like, just black anywhere, so as light bounces around the rest of the room, hits the onion, it provides this sort of ambient effect. And since the color is kind of, like, gradiented outwards, you can see that it's got its diffuse component, which is, in terms, it became a very sort of a nice way for... Uh, people into computer graphics to do sort of lighting because it, it provides a sort of realistic effect but only sort of like three parts in, in, in its uh, lighting computations. Okay, so let's say that we want to model our onion. What we have is a set of vertices and we don't have information of what it is in, in between the vertices. We cannot specify information for every single point of the model, so we have to infer that information from the vertices. Let's consider a single polygon. Its interior can enclose a number of pixels, and as we have said, we need to calculate the color of each one. Flash shading is the easiest way of doing this. It consists in taking the normal vectors from the vertices and average them to obtain the polygon normal. With the polygon normal, we apply the lighting equation to fill all pixels with the same color. The result is a single color polygon of flat appearance. Flat shading is a very simple and sort of primitive technique. It, uh, as you can see from this example, um, colors aren't interp interpolated uh, between the polygons. It's just one flat color per polygon, hence flat shading. Um, this was done mainly because resources were uh, in demand on machines back then, and there wasn't any real way to uh, do all the calculations for any more advanced lighting in a way that was, you know, feasible in the sense that it would still be fast and you'd be able to run things. So, because of this, it was mainly used in uh, old uh, video games and maybe a few movies uh, that used really cheesy, cheesy special effects. Um, but uh, uh, this, as you can see from this example, uh, it did its job back then, and now there's much more complicated things. Gouraud shading is a more sophisticated technique than flat shading. Here we have the polygon again, and we have also the normal vectors of the vertices. This time, unlike flat shading, we don't calculate a single color for the polygon, we calculate one color per vertex. Then we interpolate those colors to obtain the final color of each pixel. The final result is a polygon filled with a gradient of color which produces a softer look than with flat shading. Gouraud shading produces better results than flat shading and objects show a more natural look. However, it also has problems. For example, if we have a light that is placed such that a highlight is produced in the middle of the polygon, then this highlight will be missed in the final result. To fill the polygon we have just used information from the vertices. In addition, if we have a highlight just over a vertex, 
then the highlight will be interpolated across the surrounding polygons, producing highlights of unnatural shapes. In this example, we have Gro Shading, a um, very popular character here. Uh, you can see uh, on the actual character model that um, uh, the shapes are uh, more complicated than in flat shading. Um, you can also see that the color sort of interpolates uh, where, where it's supposed to be shaded. Um, the color changes as you go up the model. Um, and because, uh, because it's not just one color per polygon, uh, it's definitely not flat shading. It's definitely more complicated than that. And you can sort of see um, in certain places in the character model there's our, where the vertices are deforming that indicates grow shading. Um, as you know, it does all of its calculations uh, per vertex. Phone shading is the most complex and sophisticated shading model of the three models we are going to see. As in previous cases, we start with a polygon and the vertex normals. In this case, however, instead of interpolating colors, we are going to interpolate the normals themselves. With the new normals and the lighting equation, we can obtain accurate results for the color of each pixel. The result is a polygon with accurate colors where in addition it is possible to show highlights correctly independently of their position. There is a big drawback, however, since it is necessary to apply the lighting equation once per pixel, which is computationally expensive. Okay, this is an example of fong shading. Um, fong shading is different from grow shading because it interpolates the, uh, the uh, normals and gets color per pixel rather than per vertex and then inter interpolating the color. Um, Fong is used today, but um, it's still not as uh, prolific as Garo, mainly because it's very computationally expensive. Um, in this example, uh, the, the character models are uh, Fong shaded. Um, you can clearly see uh, the sort of reflection. It uses the three uh, components from the lighting equation, ambient, diffuse, and specular, creating the nice glossy sort of uh, effect, which suits this example very well. So that was our shading presentation. We had a uh, flat shading, grow shading, and fong shading. Um, as you go up towards fong shading, it gets more complicated, and flat shading is very uncomplicated, so, but fong looks a lot nicer than flat. So it's more of a trade-off is what you sort of get what you pay for in terms of how much computation you do, it gets a more realistic uh, uh, lighting model. Apart from the cost of each um, shading model, you can use them according to the look you want to get into your models. So, for example, if you want to get a, a plastic look, you can use Shun Fong. And if you want to get a matte look, you can use Pro. You don't uh, want to use Flat for anything, though. Yeah, so we hope you learned something about shading and the kinds of shading that we talked about. Um, and that's it.